creative basic science for me is that you have your eyes open for new things. It's a bit like an artist. It is creative because you're going, you're going to discover a territory where nobody has been yet. The human brain is certainly one of the most complex and fascinating organs of the body. While our understanding of the workings of the brain is still far from complete, progress in technology has allowed researchers to break new ground, little by little revealing its secrets. Our brain regulates all the other organs in our bodies. It stimulates our muscles, coordinates our cognitive functions, it gives direction to our movements. If you just think about what kind of movements we can do as humans, um, they are very diverse and essentially everything we do is movements. Um, it's like, you know, I'm talking to you now, I'm making gestures, I'm talking, even the talking is movement, I'm walking, I can run. And so the question is how um, does the nervous system um, distinguish between what kind of movements we want to make. And it turns out that this is really laid down in very precise connectivities within the nervous system. And so we are trying to see how these neurons connect with each other by revealing them anatomically. So we are visualizing them in the microscopes and we are looking which neurons are talking to each other in the nervous system. Sylvia Arber is a neurobiologist. In her laboratory, the focus is on movement, with the goal of understanding how neuronal circuits orchestrate motor behavior. Sylvia Arber has shown that neurons are organized in subpopulations, each of which is responsible for specific actions. She conducts her research based on mouse brains. So at the moment I'm staining a brain of an animal that have been previously going through a training. So we are training usually the animal for different tasks. So these are brain section, we cut the brain of the mouse in a coronal section from rostral to caudal and we need to stain, uh, most of the time we need to stain everything. One of the reasons that I, I like to be a scientist is that I am a really curious person and usually if I have a question, usually I have the tools that I can answer my question. Or I'm, we're using uh, uh, mice for performing our experiments, but at the moment I'm working mostly on uh, uh, labeling specific sets of neurons in the brainstem and looking how they then relate to function. How are they active during a specific behavior, for example, during running or during uh, uh, reaching movements or whatever, something like this. And I'm trying to relate those two things together such that we can in the end uh, come up with conclusions about this brain area is active during those tasks and c kind of put, be, could be potentially implicated in these, in these things. Already when I studied, I, I was fascinated mostly by neuroscience because I, I somehow felt, and I still feel this today, that even though there's still lots to discover in other areas, for me this is just a big mystery. I mean, to put it uh, bluntly, we don't understand at all how the brain works. Sylvia Arber was always fascinated by neurosciences and encouraged by her father Werner Arber, the Swiss microbiologist and winner of the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 1978, she studied biology at the Biozentrum of the University of Basel. Having subsequently spent a few years at Columbia University in New York, she returned to Basel where she now continues her research. This is somewhat unusual for research scientists who are generally obliged to move around. However, Basel offers Sylvia Arber a rewarding professional equilibrium. She divides her time between the Biocentrum and the Friedrich Miescher Institute, where she earned her PhD in 1995. The, the atmosphere in the Biocentrum, I think, is because when this institute was founded, it was founded as a standalone institute at the time, outside of the university, um, and but connected to the university. And therefore, we have set up a lot of infrastructure inside. We have our own workshop, we have our own support staff, and these people feel very much part of it. So it's a very, they're easy, they're short ways, it's easy going, so people know whom to talk to. There's no form to fill out. You just go and talk and you get the things done. So that makes for a very efficient uh, way of, of operating. In Basel, Sylvia Arber has found a scientific community with which she shares not only her discoveries, but also her plans and ideas for future research. Let's take uh, the, the neurobiology department in Colombia's 80 neurobiologists. Here at FMI, I have seven. And <laughs> you would say, well, you can't compete. 
But indeed, we do compete. They say on our topic, uh, which is neuronal circuitry and how circuits of cells function together, we're considered one of the best places in the world. And so I think the fact is that a few people working together who are really devoted to their science, devoted to sharing, devoted to uh, discovery, it can be a magic, a magical atmosphere. And I think, I mean, I don't know if we create that magic every day, but there, there is something about the magic of discovery here that's, that's very special. When I saw a chance of recruiting her to Basel after a postdoc, I really went for that. We have a very lively community in neuroscience in Basel, which I think is actually a huge asset for all of us. And so in that context, we see each other a lot. Um, we also, uh, I mean, she reads basically every paper we write. I read many of, of her papers. So we have remained, you know, sort of, of um, you know, the first check, uh, you know, friendly check uh, for, you know, how, how the outside world would, would respond to what we do. Uh, we organize things together, like, you know, these Ascona meetings that are quite famous. I think it's very important that you have a handful of people in, in your back where you can trust that they say, tell you the truth. If they think that something is not good, um, they don't tell you in your face just, ah, oh, you know, it's great, you're great, but they actually tell you the truth. It's an environment dedicated to biology, where she can share her knowledge and passion for neurosciences. If students are not exposed to our research and if they're not getting excited by what we are doing, then of course the research would die out with us. So we need to bring in new people all the time and train them and, and pass on this passion for, for our own uh, field of, 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 of interest and expertise. Uh, many people do it uh, with, with great enthusiasm because it also brings future workers into their own labs and because of a conviction that this is a, a societal responsibility. We spend a lot of taxpayers' money here, and so the, it's important that uh, people understand what we're doing. It's, it's important that the students get well trained and can, can pass on this into the future. I think it's, it's really important to see people at different stages of how they, how they grow and mature scientifically. And I'm teaching from very basics, basic uh, stuff all the way to PhD students and postdocs that are in my lab. So I think it's actually very nice to see how people grow when you educate them. You don't necessarily see the same person throughout all these steps, but I think it's, it's great to see minds beginning to work in science and, and shape them. I, I really like it, yes. Sylvia Arbour will soon be continuing her research based in this new building overlooking Basel. A new biocentrum synonymous with vision for the future. It's actually now that I'm the first time in this office and see this view having grown up in Basel, it's actually great to see it from above. I'm sure it will inspire me for lots of things.